Hey y'all, how are you? It's your favorite George Rican. And today I will be making one of my family's favorite simple quick dishes, fish tacos. I don't know about you guys, but I love tacos in any form, shape, flavor, whatever. And my family really loves fish tacos. So that's what I'm gonna do tonight. I have with fish tacos, we do a little bit of a different topping than your like traditional um, beef or chicken tacos or shrimp tacos, whatever. And so we have, and I, these are quick, fast ways to get the meal on the on the plate. Is so instead of buying a whole head of cabbage and chopping it up yourself, which you can do if you're going to make other things, but I just buy some pre-made slaw. And then I add what I'm gonna do. And instead of like, people are thinking, ooh, slaw on fish tacos, it's not a mayo base. It's gonna be a sour cream base. A sour cream with um, cilantro and lemon. It's gonna be very zesty, uh, very bright uh, with flavor, a little acid to go on those fish tacos. Then we're gonna do like a quick little pico de gallo with some red onion, a little bit of tomato and cilantro. And I know in the past when I've talked to you guys about my sofrito, which is that wet spice that I use a lot, I'm not going to use it today, but I've mentioned cilantro and I've mentioned culantro. And a lot of people may be like, oh, what is she talking about? You may be thinking, is she mispronouncing cilantro? No. Culantro and cilantro come from the same family. They are a very, oh my gosh, vibrant, strong smell and flavor. It's amazing. So this is how culantro looks like. If you don't have a farmer's market near you, which um, Atlanta, I can go to Atlanta and get them, but it, it is a good drive for me because I live in Northeast Georgia and my camera is falling. So anyways, uh, I was like, am I getting shorter? <laughs> so do you see this leaf? Okay, so like I was saying, if you have a, a farmer's market, um, you can, you know, find it there easily. But if you don't, if you have an Asian market, um, you can find it there. <laughs> I don't know what my husband's doing. Anyways, um, so I found this in this um, Laotian Thai kind of um, grocery store that's close to where I live. Uh, it's right by the um, Thai restaurant. So for those that are local, um, yeah, you can find it there. And it's very economical. I think this whole bag of culantro was like a dollar. And then this whole bag of cilantro was also a dollar. So very economical to try some new spices and flavors and and such and give it a whirl. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of this, but mostly cilantro. Are these not just gorgeous? They're so fragrant and they go good with any dish, in my opinion. But if you don't like cilantro, then you probably won't like culantro. And you know, that's fine. But don't be asking for none of my cooking because it's full of it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's just how I do. Mm. Gorgeous beauties. Okay, so. What I do to my fish to just and get it prepared, it's very simple. I have thought out, I usually like to use cod, uh, any kind of fish. This is flounder. It's just a, a mild white fish. I'm not gonna do too much to it. I'm basically gonna uh, pan fry it, um, dredge it lightly with some flour. It can be self-rising flour, AP flour, all purpose. It doesn't matter, just a few ingredients. Um, and then I'm gonna put it in a, you know, a platter like this just so I can have it easy on hand to it up. So let me see if I can give you a better angle if I'm here. Yeah, maybe this. So I would just lightly season this with, of course, adobo, pepper, some garlic salt. Basic, basic, all purpose seasoning. This is nothing super special. I'm gonna get some of this flour. I can get it open. And it is cool to the brim. Okay. 
And I'm basically just sprinkling it on this because I don't want my fish to stick when I put it in here. But here we go. And I'm sprinkling it in here. Seasoning up the fish, turning it around, shaking some garlic. And... Okay, so now that I got all my fish pretty much seasoned and dredged, we're going to start frying. Um, the only reason why we have a little bit of flour is just to give it a little crispy texture um, in the taco. You can do a more like tempura top flour if you want, whatever. That's fine. I don't, I don't need it. Now, what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of olive oil in the pot and then start putting the fish in. But what I do to add that heat, because I'm not, I like jalapeno, but not like a big like heat fest in your mouth where you can't taste everything else. So I just, I don't know if you can see this, but I just slice up a couple of jalapenos in half and I put them in the oil. See down. And so what that does, it infuses my oil with them heat. And so then it gives it that little spiciness as it cooks all over the fish, which is just the perfect amount of heat for me. And then once my, um, cause I don't put any in like my pico de gallo. I don't, um, you can, if you like, but sometimes we just, um, put like some store bought salsa. I'm doing some fresh, um, pico de gallo today in a slaw that has, um, sour cream and, lemon and cilantro in it and then we're just gonna have avocado very simple so you have your slaw which is very few ingredients basically cabbage a little bit of maybe some green onion some sour cream salt pepper and lime and cilantro and then you have pico de gallo which is basically onions cilantro and tomato and jalapeno if you want and then some salt and pepper or whatever super super simple anybody can do this and then we just put it all together and then we warm up our tortillas. I put them on the counter so they can start warming up, but I go ahead and do it on the stove, warmed up. Let's go ahead and make our slaw really quick. I just wanna show you how simple it is. And you don't have to make this whole package. Remember, it's just going to tacos, so just a little bit. You can always make a little bit more. I don't like wasting. I mean, I, I guess because I came from a family of five kids, and um, we never went hungry, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but we just never wasted food. So I probably did about half the bag, whatnot. Then these have seen better days. They're a little, like, on the wimpy part, but they still have the flavor. That's what I want. I'm going to chop these green onions up leftovers when I made fried rice the other day. I don't know if y'all watched that video. And fried rice has nothing to do with Georgia or Puerto Rico. Um, but I just love it. So I want to share with you how I make it. But I will say this, like I said in my last video, some of the best Chinese rice I ever had was in Puerto Rico. Do that. Yeah. If you don't believe it, there's a lot of um, Asian people that live in Puerto Rico and they speak Three languages they speak Spanish fluently and Chinese and I'm imagining they speak English too all right so we just put some green onions in here now I'm gonna get a good trick is to roll your lime or lemon before you put it in before you are gonna use it it helps release the juices sometimes you cut into it and it's like so hard because you haven't massaged it so if you roll your lemon or lime around it's going to make it so much easier to juice i'm just going to cut it in half let me get my little handy dandy juice or thing here real easy just put it in here and squeeze it right into the bowl Smells so good. A lot of times I'll zest it first. Anytime you can put zest in your things, just gonna give it more of that flavor. 
And a lot of times I'll have my husband come back and squeeze these for me. If I feel like I'm too weak. I'll use another one of this. Let me check. I don't know about you guys. I love dairy, but it doesn't love me. And ever since I found out about lactate, I just been using it. Lactate free, so I can still have the sour cream and the ice creams, and they make a lot of different products. Yeah, I'm make sure it was okay. And sometimes it gets that like little bit of water layer on top. Just mix it up and it'll be fine. So we get a couple heaps of that. I'm gonna put some salt. And then, I'm sorry, some pepper and some salt. And I'm just gonna toss it. And that's all she wrote. And like I said, you wanna spice it up, put me some jalapeno or whatever. There's so many ways you can do it. I'm not saying my way is the only way or the perfect way. It's just how we like it. And so you don't want it drenched. You know what I'm saying? You just want it. All right. So you don't want your coleslaw like drenched and soggy. So you just want it kind of coated with the sour cream. And then I'm going to add a little bit of, so remember your, so your lime gives it, you know, a little bit more. Let's cut this up. Kind of cut that on the small side, but it's okay. I've also heard that if you stick it in the microwave for like a few seconds, that it helps release the juices. I don't know. I just love that acidy lime flavor with the sour cream on the cabbage and just that little bit of onion and then salt and pepper. Trust me. It's just a good light fresh flavor to go with that spicy hot um, crispy fish and that coolness of this with the coolness of the pico de gallo and then the creamy avocado it's just the whole combination is a win-win so let's go ahead and make a little pico de gallo i usually don't use this tomato i usually use roma but because of rona Supplies are limited, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't even know if this is going to be good because it's kind of feeling soft a little. And some people like to see them. Their tomatoes and stuff, but it's all good. We want to kind of cut everything even uniform if you will so that not one thing is bigger than the other that's fine another one of our favorite like pico de gallos homemade chunky salsa whatever one, and that we like to do is a watermelon salsa or a watermelon I'm just my finger there. a watermelon pineapple salsa is one of our favorites for like fish tacos shrimp tacos mm, so good if you've never tried it, do yourself a favor. Try it. Because think about it. The flesh of the pine, I'm sorry, not the pineapple, but the watermelon is kind of like a tomato. It's just a little sweeter. But you dice it up just like you would the tomato. See, I found the middle part. I use all of it and just take that hard part out. going to put it in the sandy bowl. You can also put a little bit of lime in your pico de gallo. It's just good. Do it how you want. You know, read up on a classic, on a recipe, and then add things that you love that make it unique in what, you know, is from Julia, just for you. Rico, sabroso, lo que sea. I know a lot of people are like, Ay, Kayla, are you really Puerto Rican? Do you Spanish? Do you speak Spanish? Yes, but I'm in Georgia. And uh, I'm doing a Georgia Rican cuisine. So for those that don't 
This is for the people that don't speak Spanish. This is for everybody, okay? Let's get that straight. Don't get it twisted. But for those that want to learn our culture, that want to learn how to make Puerto Rican food, I gotta speak English to them. Para que sepan, tú sabes lo que estoy diciendo. Que aprendan los ingredientes, como nosotros cocinamos un poquito. You know, some people are like, oh, I don't want to give my secrets away because I don't want to be like, maybe they'll open up their own restaurant. Like, people, we, YOLO. Okay, first of all, we are too young and I am too blessed to be trying to be selfish with what God has blessed me with. I didn't pick to be born in Puerto Rico. That's just where I was born. But I was never born in Germany and I love their food too or Korea or China or things like that, Thailand, Japanese. And they've been, people have been lovely and generous to share with me their recipes so I can learn and cook it at home. So that's all I'm doing here. All right, that's kind of like, I got my finger. Okay, so a lot of accidents with the knives, people are like, oh, I couldn't cut with a knife or whatever. I have a little tool that will um, stabilize this. You can always cut the bottom. If you're afraid of your vegetable rolling like mine is, you know what? Cut a piece of the bottom off like I just did. And now, look, it's not going to roll because it's flat. This is what's actually making my hand slip. But you're supposed to, like, put your knuckles here and hide it. Okay, you know what, Food Network? You do you. And thank you for all them tips. But I can't hold my knife like this really strong. I always have to, like, pressure with my finger like this. So a lot of accidents that happen with knives is because the knives are dulled and they slip. Or because you're just not paying attention and you have a really sharp knife that you shouldn't have and then you cut yourself. So, I'm sure y'all didn't need the lesson on how people cut themselves. But it's just how it is. Okay, so I'm just chopping along. Simple. I think anybody can do is chop your onions. I try to chop them the same size that I did. Um, some are a little bit thinner because I cut it thinner. My tomato. And like I was saying, I usually love to use Roma tomatoes, but because of you know the quarantine and what's going on, I don't have. You see that? It's so colorful too. I love to eat with my eyes. Look at the purple, the red, and then I told you guys I was gonna use cilantro. So I am starting to get emotional here. Because when I talk about my culture, no, just kidding. It's onions, y'all. It is the onions. <laughs> They're messing with my looking balls. And now I'm going to be all like, like I'm crying. It's all good. I'm putting a little bit of this culantro because I've never put it in here. Okay? I mean, confession. Confession is good for the soul. I use cilantro all the time. I was like, I had some culantro. So I was like, I wonder how it'd be in my pico de gallo. So, Yeah. That's what I'm doing, I'm just spinning it in here. And then I'm gonna grab me some cilantro. And I just have it in this little cup here. And it's already been pre-washed. Cilantro is sandy, y'all. Okay, so whenever you get it from the grocery store and things like that, do me a favor, wash it up. I did learn this from Rachel Ray to watch her religiously. When she had her 30 minute meals, my husband worked late at night. So he's never home. And it was just me and Mason for, for years. Um, and so I would watch the Food Network and um, her show, basically. I think it came on like at 6, 6.30 or like an hour and a half. I watched it two or three times. And so she always talked about, and I've done this ever since. You get your um, produce from store, wash it then or whatever. Get your cilantro, rinse it several times because it is gritty and sandy. You don't want that in your food. Then once you get it, you and dry it. And you cover it with like paper towels and you put in a Ziploc bag, like gallon bag, put it in your fridge and it'll keep longer. It won't get like so. But I do that, but I also do this, put it with a little bit of uh, water in my fridge and this lasts for a while too. So either way, however you feel most comfortable. And I'm just chopping and dropping. Look at the colors in here. Okay, I could eat this like a snack. Okay, but I'm not even gonna lie. You can make anything and just top it with this. Delicious. Just put a little salt. You can tell I watch Food Network a lot because what I was just about to say, which you don't know, but I'm going to say it anyway, so you know what I'm talking about, is I don't know where you get your vegetables and 
fruit from that they don't come seasoned. So like potatoes, onions, tomatoes, they don't come seasoned. They have flavor, but they don't come seasoned. So you need to put a little bit of salt and pepper to bring out that natural, more of that natural flavor. Okay, look at that. Stop the madness. It's delicious. And I'm gonna see if I can juice a little bit of, squeeze a little bit of extra, any lemon that's still in here. Why? Because I can, boo. You do you. I do me. I'm sorry. And my production's just trying to talk to me. This is it's live. It's live. I keep saying lemon. Okay, this is limon verde in Spanish, which is how do you say lime in Spanish? Limon. How do you spell say lemon in Spanish? Limon. So limon and then limon verde. I don't know. Y'all fact checkers out there. Is there a different way we can say lime in Spanish? So I keep saying I'm gonna. Y'all, y'all just gonna have to. It's part of speaking multiple language. You think you're saying one thing and you're saying another. So I'm glad for my fact checker back there. Thank you, babe. Always got my back. There's a couple things on my videos that I kept saying, you don't want to burn your oil and I meant garlic, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Read between the lines, okay? So we got one of our top, we got both of our toppings basically done. We have this fresh pico de gallo. We got this slaw. And then we're just gonna slice, slice up some avocado aguacate and put it in there and that's it what we got to do now is just pan fry this with our jalapeno i'm gonna go get another one because i usually need another one you don't um use this for anything else after you fried with it and you put it in the oil it gets all black and it's just gonna release all that heat into the pot with your fish so we're about to go over there let me make sure we have everything we need we have it seasoned and yeah come on over i was gonna say i have daddy cut it but this is one of those um continuous thing i have to learn how to Oh, my, husband, my son is telling me there's another camera back there. We can edit. Oh, no, it's looking at my booty. Okay, so we're just putting, a, I don't know if you can see, a little bit of oil in here. It's kind of basically cold coating the pots. Can you see that? Yeah. So, let me move this. That's it. I'm just coating my pot. I'm going to need a little bit more. I love to cook with olive oil. Okay. So it's, it's coating my pot, but also got a, a little bit going here. Turn it on. And I just get my jalapenos that I told you guys about. And stick it in here. And then get my tongs. So with my tongs, kind of squeeze it the heat it's gonna release those jalapeno oils and it's gonna spice up this oil and so when I'm cooking and you can you can slice them up more if you want I just don't like them getting the way in it and it does the trick so I'm gonna let this oil heat up then I'm gonna put this in here wipe clean this tray off or grab another one and put it in there and that's it let me grab a cast iron to start warming up my tortillas at the same time as well. Let me see. I usually do it right here on the stove because it's clean and the heat, but I think I'll just get a little pop. This should be fine. It's been on high so get started. Okay. All right, now I got my oil 
little mice and hot crack a lacking. And we're gonna put this in. and this is a very thin and light paste. It won't take it very long to cook. This is lightly dressed in this flour. This too. You just shake off the excess just to give it a little bit of a crisp around. I'm actually going to go ahead and get them just maybe this tray. Line it with a little bit of paper towel. And just got my tortillas here. You could put a whole bunch of these stacked up on top of each other, wrap them up in one pool, put it in your oven like at 200. And by the time you finish cooking, it's done. That's what I should have done, honestly. But we do like to toast them. And so I'll just get another plate. And with a clean towel, I'll put, keep stacking them in here and covering it up. And they'll stay warm and fresh and yummy. All right, let me check on my... and see if I can yep. just getting a little crispiness. And what's easy about this, you can just put this right here, pull it out, and put the next one. Fill it all crispy all around and let that crisp up a little bit more on that side. And keep adding this, put another jalapeno in here. I want to make sure there's enough spiciness in here. How beautiful and golden that piece of fish is. And I have it on medium, and I just dropped it to medium low. Keep moving around these jalapenos around. They get blistered, but they release all the, that oil. This one, I think, is ready to turn. Yep. Tortilla is just about ready. Yep. It 
if you can't multitask and do your tortillas, don't do it. Tortillas don't take long, so you can always just do them at the end. You don't want to burn your fish because the tor tortilla and the fish they might cook. They pretty much cook at the same time because they're so thin and small. So I only have one more piece. Let me go ahead and flip that in here. Keep moving these jalapenos around. So see how really dark these jalapenos get, but they're releasing all those juice, that heat. And I promise you, it's not super hot. It's just a nice little kick. Check these out. our fried fish which we use flounder this time like I said cod is one of my favorite you can do anything we have our warmed up tortillas and like I said before you can put the whole package take it out of the plastic of course wrap it in aluminum foil stick it in your oven at 200 250 and just on low it's gonna warm them all up and be yummy and while you're doing everything else that can be done when you're ready to eat they're all done in one time and then we did our quick slaw which is cabbage, sour cream, a little bit of green onion, lime juice, and then some seasonings. And again, you can add some cilantro. I usually do, but because the pico de gallo has cilantro, I'm not this time. But you could, I mean, I love, I put culantro and cilantro in this. So in this pico, I just use red onion and the tomato that I had, I love to use Roma normally some salt and pepper and some lime juice and cilantro simple and delicious and then our avocado so let's get to assembling let me cut into this avocado hope it's a good one mm, looks perfect and then i'm just gonna go ahead and slice it in here a lot of people scoop it out and slice it I find it just as easy to slice it in here and then scoop it out already in slices. So, let's get assembling. Get your tortilla. Get you some fish. You can put the whole thing, or this one's cut in half, so this is gonna be like perfect. You can put two pieces, how many you want. Can you see that? I'm gonna put this slaw. You know what? I feel like that is, it's, it's looking skimpy. So let's go ahead and put two, you know, basically one fillet. So two pieces of fish would be one fillet. Pile it up with that. Put your pico de gallo on there. What? And 
let's get this. Let's get this some this avocado. Oh my god, it is so good and ripe. It's just it's, it feels like butter when soft and butter when I was getting it. So let me pick a few slices and put it on top. And just because we want to be fancy. I'm gonna get some fresh cilantro and put it right there. What? That's it, y'all. That's easy fish tacos. So let's let's see. And then, you know, if you want to put some store-bought salsa on it, you can, babe. Where's that salsa you said we had? I'm going to put a little bit of salsa once Richie gets it to me. I'm going to do a big old bite. Got it. So, oh my gosh, the struggle is real. My nails, y'all, haven't seen a technician in a couple weeks now with this corona. A little bit of salsa. This is like double tomato and everything, but they all have different flavors. But when all combined, does that not look glorious? Well. All right. The ultimate taste. Let's see. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Get that kick from the jalapeno. It was in that oil. Mmm, just the right amount. But that freshness of that pico de gallo and the sour cream cools it down. You don't need cheese. You don't need. Oh my gosh, it's so fresh. That crunch from the fish, just because we lightly breaded it, was perfect. Y'all, can y'all see this bite? All that stuff, and maybe not. Mm. Mm. It's cheesy mess. Yep. Perfect every time. Simple, no fuss. So if you have any questions, let me know. But I hope you enjoy fish tacos a la Kayla. From my kitchen to yours. Till next time, buen provecho.